I just wanted you to see that I'm not cheating when I tell you that I have melons and pumpkins. I spawned very close to underground ravines and abandoned mines. And I've been saving, even looking at these chests until I could record it for you. I've had to downgrade. 1.7.10 is useless and a lot of people are complaining about frame rate drop when they try to record. And I'm on rural internet. It is the monsoon season and we're finally actually having a monsoon season. You see the wireframes appear and the blocks don't. I'm just showing this to show you the weird lag problems I'm having. So uh, the rural internet is really badly messed up and there's not even any point in asking them to come out and repair it until most of the damage is done from the storms because it'll just get torn up again. We don't have any buried cables, everything's above ground because the little local electric co-op won't bury their electrical wires and so the national phone company uh, won't bury theirs unless the electrical company does. It's absurd. Here's my abandoned mine. I've been working very, very hard packing to get moved, um, cleaning stuff out. There's a lot of mold on things because the roof leaks and it's been raining on the bed a lot and the walls and even stuff in the kitchen and so on. I mean, they're only a few feet away from each other. The trailer's only 30 feet long. My body is five feet long, so that tells you, and it's seven feet wide. So. It's as wide as a vehicle, like about the size of a uh, standard school bus, not a short bus, so a regular bus. And everything's moldy and damp and um, um, mildewy sometimes. And I think this is where I spawned. And I wanted you to see the progress I've made way off behind me. I think I'm going to show you this in the video in a minute, are spruce trees. And so, yeah, off in that direction, my render distance is low because my frame rate is so bad. I didn't want to force this poor thing to load any more than it had to. Even with this texture pack, this 8-bit texture pack, I'm just barely able to operate. Here's a mob spawner I'm making. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, but it's very practical for either one-hit kills or uh, they drop to their deaths. I have two blocks that are just tall enough to make it one hit kills and two blocks a little lower so they just pretty much kerplunk unless they're wearing armor and junk. I even get Endermen down here sometimes and I manage to kill them before they um, teleport. Uh, I should explain that I built all of this in survival. I just could not take you on a tour of the build in survival because of the lag and the slowness and even with this tape edited down as much as I could edit it, you see how jerky and jaggy it is. It's really uncomfortable. Look at all the surface area in this thing for things to spawn on, and they do. There's a platform in the middle for spiders because I noticed I wasn't getting any spiders. It's because I didn't have any 2 by 2 area in here. So, no, it's not the most efficient mob spawner. <clears throat> but for just regular supplies, and I even get witches down here, for regular supplies, a little bit of tacky armor, a little bit of XP, it serves my purposes. I was thinking this would be a fishing platform, but I, you know, let the mob spawn, but I ended up building something else. You see each ladder has um, a water pool in case I fall. These are skylights under the sand. I dug all that out, all the um, dirt and some of the stone under that hill built my underground base. Here's a barn for my animals. I was going to haul water and then I thought, well, that's silly. I'm in an ocean. So I, instead, I'm going to call that my fish trap. And it just hauled up a bunch of fish. It's all pretend. Who cares? The uh, barn is mob proof on top. It's fence posts and carpets and things like that. So nothing can spawn on top. You know, one of the luxuries in this game that you hardly ever get is darkness. And I'm trying to exploit as much darkness as I can, but in ways that are safe. Uh, so I don't have to deal with, well, for one thing, mob spawning is, you see how it's so hard to maneuver anyway. And that's after downgrading and with Optifine and 
with an 8-bit texture pack. <laughs> so here's the little bar, and the animals love it. Apparently, I haven't checked my directions, but apparently I think it must be in the northwest area of the animal pen because they're all gravitating into the barn. I didn't do that intentionally, but I'm glad it worked out that way. It's a little hard to navigate in the barn, however. So I've been working very, very hard and uh, packing canned goods and uh, dry beans and cleaning everything off as I go because if and when I move, I'm not taking any of this filth with me. My littlest cat, Itty Bitty Kitty Committee, is killing every mouse she finds that comes over from Ray's house. Um, I'm getting rid of cockroaches. I'm getting rid of um, mold and spider webs. I mean, I like having spiders in here because they killed a lot of the roaches. This I wish I hadn't developed so much. I didn't know I was going to have a ravine right by my base. Uh, I found this by accident out in the ocean and piled sand down in it and dried it out and made ladders and whatnot. You see, I'm going to cover all this in dirt. I'm making four blocks of dirt turned to grass, paths, and also there's going to be a rail track. I want plenty of space in case I need to use boats or I, I've been digging sand over there where that skylight thing is. And also this, this is a continent. You can't see it because of the render distance, but I think it's a continent. There's a large landmass to my back uh, off in that direction. And this is where I flattened it out, but I left that poor little dead bush and put a lamp around it. <laughs> kind of like a little uh, lighthouse. Uh, I've got the uh, sugar cane just for illumination. It tends to glow. And I'm slowly but surely building a rail track to go all the way out to the mesa. Uh, that's indigenous rail track that I've been finding in the abandoned mines. Plus, I've had to make powered rail. I'm finding enough gold that I can justify the expense. Here's my boat dock. So, eventually, I would like to circumnavigate by boat. I'm hoping to find horses or, gosh, with any luck at all, a donkey. Oh, I want a donkey. I want more than one. So there's my boathouse. It really is just steps to get down to the water from uh, the little patio area above. This wood is very scarce. This um, birch wood, I had to go very, very far to get it one of my first boat trips and I brought back some saplings and started a little birch farm. There's no birch locally. But I wanted a light blonde wood to blend in with the sand so it wouldn't be so intrusive and invasive. I like building into the landscape, not standing out and shocking. Most of my gardens and stuff were just dirt that I found underground and that uh, uh, barbecue will eventually have another rack in it, but I haven't been to the nether. So there's no flamey stuffies. And this is my little couchy doodle. I make these a lot with the little shade covers. So I've been working very, very hard and I'm very, very tired. And uh, I'm afraid to cry because I'm afraid I won't be able to stop. And I'm very discouraged about finding affordable housing and uh, oh, the reason that's checkerboard, the rail track, is makes it easier to count where to put the powered rails. Because I'm vision impaired, I don't see the wireframes well, and it's been aggravating as the dickens, counting things out. That's why there's so many torches here, too. I know you don't need torches more than about one every five blocks, but I can't see that well, and I'm tired of making mistakes and feeling like I have to correct them. So I just covered everything that needed torches with a lot of torches. And it glitters and glistens at night and it looks so beautiful. Most of the torches are made out of charcoal from oak trees or from planks I found in the abandoned mines. So it, uh, I'm not, there's no harm. I've got two diamonds, whoopee. You know, and ender pearls. I've been killing endermen. Um, you'd be very proud of me. I've been killing a lot of things. I'm not gonna try to kill anything tonight. Here's my patented special bed, made out of lots of beds in a pinwheel pattern. I'm discouraged by the hostility and the cruelty and the indifference of people around me. I've been having optical migraines 
and can't see well and nobody cares uh, I'm scared my body is physically tired uh, to the point of near exhaustion I don't have an adequate diet um, and my feet got frostbitten last winter and I think it, it did I know it did cause nerve damage because there's a constant burning and uh, stinging it's like hot glass cutting into my feet and of course the work I'm doing I'm on my feet all day and lifting heavy things and so I'm experiencing a lot of the uh, effects of my brain injuries because the optical migraines where I can't see um, the physical fatigue I'm working as hard and as well as I can. I get up very early in the morning and by daybreak <laughs> I'm outside working while it's still cool outside and I usually work until about one o'clock in the afternoon or a little earlier depending on whether it rains or not. Monsoon season here tends to happen in the uh, late afternoon early evenings and then I come in the house and I rest in the hottest part of the day as much as I can and then I try to go out in the afternoons and evenings and do stuff too. Mostly like try and get food because I don't really have a way to cook. Because the house is infested with cockroaches. So I'm taking my toaster ovens and hot plates and stuff outside. And I'm trying to cook out there. Mostly I'm living on things like peanut butter, um, keys, canned fruit, uh, crackers, ramen noodles, things like that. Making sure I get enough protein and the fruit to try to get enough vitamins and stuff because I get very weak and I'm I'm worried but I'm only eating about two standardized meals a day uh, at most it's just too hard to prepare food and also without running water it's hard to wash my hands in the middle of all the working and stop and eat and of course I can't wash dishes worth the darn because I have to do them outside because I don't have any pipes and stuff so here's where two ravines intersect, and I built a light fixture that goes all the way down to uh, the bottom of a really deep ravine. That's where I've been scrounging around at finding gold and things. Can't wait to start doing some stuff with redstone. It'll be very remedial stuff, but um, I would like to see what I can do. I'm not going to pretend I understand any of it, but I'll just see what I can do. So I'll do another vlog so you can see my progress. The people at the local dollar store have been very kind about the when their shipment came in this week. All the boxes that contained heavy things like bleaches and laundry soaps and uh, canned goods and heavy things, boxes that were designed to carry heavy things, they saved them all for me. They usually break them down and send them to be recycled. But they saved me a lot of them, and they have a very small stock room, so it was a, you know, it was a hassle for them to hide it back there. So I filled the back of my truck with boxes, and they're good and sturdy. And uh, the boxes I had my canned goods in got wet. When canned goods and uh, non-perishable foods are very cheap, I mean very cheap, I buy as much as I can afford. I get less than two dollars a day. No, I get about two dollars and twenty cents a day food stamps so when I can get really cheap food I buy as much as I can afford but of course there's no fresh fruits or vegetables or meats or dairy I do have one gallon of milk and I'm treasuring it because I can eat cornflakes and um, I even got some little frozen waffles on sale and somebody gave me some bacon so that was a real treat. Waffles and bacon and syrup and ice cold milk. So that's what's going on. And I'll keep putting out videos as much as I can. Yeah, there's my raccoon disguised as a cat. I even scrolled up and down so you can see it. Oh, hi. Meow. Goodbye. <laughs>